Hello, and welcome to episode 20 of Sir Astro's Star Wars Legion painting series. In this episode we're going to paint the Bark Speeder from Fantasy Flight Games' Star Wars Legion. The Bark Speeder is pretty fast and fun to paint, especially if you enjoy playing with weathering as I do. The model comes with an optional sidecar and three different types of gunner, which I found can be dry fitted for easy swapping and removal. Let's take a look at the painting stages. After assembly, I've chosen to prime the speeder in grey, and for the clone troopers I'll also be spraying some pure white from above. I've also chosen to prepare the base at this stage, so I can better judge how the whole model looks whilst I'm painting it. Next I'll be providing the base colours using a flat brush to quite quickly establish the grey body tone. We can then add some coloured markings, before painting the black areas with some contrast paint, and I'll also be strengthening the panel lines with a black ink. We can then finish things off by providing some dirty streaks and weathering, along with some optional highlights for the metalwork. And I'll be skimming over the approach I've used for painting the clone troopers, as you can find the full process detailed back in episode 17, which you can find a link to on the screen and in the video description. Let's begin. To help assemble the speeder, I'd simply suggest following the detailed PDF guide published by Fantasy Flight Games, which you'll find a link to on the screen and in the video description. Here I'm just dry fitting the V-shaped support and the sidecar to see how well things hold together. I also chose not to glue the two halves of the gunner to allow me to swap the top half out as needed. I'm now priming the separate elements in grey using Badger's Steinol Res Grey Primer. And you can see I've also sprayed the clone troopers in white from above, just as I did in the clone trooper episode. I've also primed the base in black, and I'm now painting over the firing arcs with some XV-88. After dry fitting the flight stand to the speeder, I'm now gluing the stand to the base with some super glue, ensuring that I'm happy with the placement and orientation of the speeder. I'm now providing some scenic basing as described in the earlier episodes, so here I'm applying some brown earth basing paste by Vallejo, taking care to avoid the firing arcs. Because there's quite a bit of empty space on the base, I've also chosen to add a few cork rocks. For convenience, you can also use products like Army Painter's Battlefield Rocks if you like. Once completely dry, I'm now painting the rocks using XV88, darkened with a little black. I'm now going to mix in some Zamisi Desert and brush on a quick highlight. Next I'm going to dry brush the entire base with some Tyrant Skull to sharpen the texture. And I'm now going to shade the base using a mix of Agrax Earthshade, Fugan Orange and Lamian Medium, as detailed back in episode 15. And finally I'm brushing on some thinned PVA glue, before sprinkling on some Black Battleground by Army Painter. With that done, we're ready to begin painting the speeders. I've chosen to paint the speeders using Vallejo's Deck Tan mixed with just a little black. I'm using the Series 56 flat brushes by Rosemary & Co to apply the paint. You 
You can see I'm applying this quite quickly, and by dragging the flat of the brush across the surface, we're able to mostly preserve the darker grey tone in the panel lines. I'll actually be darkening the panel lines further later on, but painting in this way makes it more of an optional step. I'm also painting the parts of the speedo where I'll later be applying some black Templar contrast colour, such as this V-shaped support and the blasters. I'm now going over this with some pure deck tan, but working a little more in a top-down fashion, so that the more shadowed areas like the underside of the craft and some of the recesses remain a little darker. We can begin to see some subtle gradients starting to appear. Next I'm mixing in some ivory and I'm applying this more like a dry brush to more sharply define some of the edges and to brighten the top edge of the fin-like section at the back of the speeder and the sidecar. Here you can see the kind of gentle gradient I'm looking for. I'm now giving a final boost to these highlights with a light dry brush of pure ivory. For a quicker tabletop standard, you could of course just use a single flat colour, such as the pure deck tan, for all of this bodywork if you like. I'm now going to paint on some coloured markings to add interest. For this speeder, I'm using Vallejo's Dark Blue, and you should of course use whatever colours and design ideas you like when doing this. I'm loosely basing these markings on the speeders from Star Wars Battlefront 2. Here you can see I'm deliberately leaving some unpainted patches to create a chipped look. I'm now mixing in a little ivory and using this to place a few quick highlights to the front of the sidecar. This is pretty optional however, as we'll be applying some fairly heavy weathering here later on.
For my second speeder, I'm using Citadel's Corn Red mixed with a little black. I'm now using some of the deck tan to add some small chips and scratches to the paintwork. With that done, I'm now going to paint all of the areas of non-panel work using Black Templar. I'm thinning this slightly with a little of the contrast medium, and perhaps an optional touch of Flow Enhancer. You can see I'm using this for all of the weapons, engine parts, pedals, etc. I'm also using this for the seats, which will of course be mostly obscured by the troopers. Finally, I've chosen to darken the main panel lines using some black ink, which I'm thinning with a little water mixed with Flow Enhancer. You don't have to use ink for this of course, black paint would be fine, or even just some non-oil or black templar if you like. I'm not too concerned about the smaller panels on the underside, as I'll be applying a fair bit of weathering here in a while. We're now ready to add some finishing touches. I'm now going to add some dirty patches and streaks to the vehicle, and you could really use any combination of black and brown tones you like to do this. I'm starting with some black templar mixed with some guillem and flesh. Whatever colours you use can of course be thinned to allow us to create a gradual build up of tone. I'm now using Vallejo's black paint to add some darker and more concentrated streaks. I'm also using this to add some small touches of dirt or chips.
To add some further variety, I'm now using some Typhus Corrosion, which I'm mixing with a little black and thinning down a fair bit. This adds a slightly gritty texture to the weathering. I've now chosen to add some pale, semi-metallic scratches using Stormhost Silver mixed with some white. I'll be pushing the weathering a little further in a while. Now I'm going to add some highlights to the black areas, and I like to mix a bluish grayscale to do this, using black, white and dark sea blue. This is a fairly optional touch however, and not essential if you're after a basic tabletop standard. I'm adding some ivory for my brightest highlights. You can see I'm being somewhat sketchy in how I apply these highlights. To paint the clone troopers, I'm using the exact same steps as detailed in episode 17, which in summary means painting the black details, before shading the model using a thinned mix of the apothecary white and black templar contrast colours, and then adding a few highlights with some pale greys. I'm also adding some coloured markings using the same tones I used for the speeders. Next I'm highlighting the guns as I did for those on the vehicle. And I'm adding some chips to the armour. I'm now gluing the troopers into place with some super glue. Notice I've still only dry fitted the upper half of the gunner to allow me to swap them out as needed. I'm also dry fitting the sidecar into place. I'm now returning to add some final touches of weathering. Here I'm using a craft knife to add some super fine scratches to the speeders. I'm 
I'm now using some black mixed with storm vermin fur and using an old brush to stipple this onto the bodywork to build up some additional depth. Just like in nature, I find the key to effective weathering often relies on the build-up of various layers of texture and tone. I'm also now going to add a layer of dusty weathering by dry brushing on some XV88. I'm now applying a few last scratches on top. And finally, I'm brightening the central highlight on the front of the vehicle. And this completes the Bark Speeder. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Do feel free to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification icon to ensure you don't miss future episodes. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Legion. Happy painting!